If you were to walk down the street right now, I want you to look at this. About one out of every six people that you pass could be living in poverty. Many of them are children. That is the brutal reality, according to the latest numbers released by the Census Bureau. Just think about it. Yet we rarely talk about the issue, right? That brings me to today's Undercover, a new segment that we're doing devoted to news that we should be covering a whole lot more. Now, here is what the numbers tell us. There you go. Last year, the nation's poverty rate was more than 15 percent. That's nearly 1 percent higher than in 2009. That may not seem like a big increase until you actually consider this. More than 46 million people lived in poverty last year. That is the highest number in 52 years. We're talking about more and more of your family members, your friends, your co-workers just struggling to survive. Now, what's the most heartbreaking is how this has actually devastated the children. Watch this. About one in every five children under 18 live in poverty. Okay? There you go. The poverty rate for them is 22 percent. I want to point out that's higher than the nation's overall rate. And the rate for African American children is nearly 40 percent, 39.2 percent. And for Hispanic children, more than one-third live in poverty. And we are just scratching the surface here to talk much more about this. Tavis Smiley, the editor of the e-book, Too Important to Fail, Saving America's Boys. Tavis joins us now from New York. Hi, Tavis. Uh, you and Cornell West launched this poverty tour last month, a road trip that's really a reminder to us of the growing issue of poverty here at home. What's most striking to you about these latest numbers that we just looked at? Uh, first of all, Randy, thank you for doing this segment. And you started by making a very poignant statement that these are subject matter that we ought to be talking about in this country, uh, and we're not often enough. Uh, too often, those of us in the media, political media, are content to cover the horse race in Washington, but not ever to drill down on what really matters. To answer your question, what troubles me about these numbers is that they keep growing. There's no sign that these numbers are going to go unabated uh, or, 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 or will go down in, in any significant way over the next couple of years. I just saw a report uh, in the car on the way to the studio here in New York that suggested that African-American unemployment, which obviously links to poverty, uh, isn't going to drop until the year 2013, maybe 2014. That's a long time to go with numbers increasing every month, every quarter. And so the striking part to answer your question is that these numbers keep growing, and when are they going to be uh, abated? Yeah. And what would you say is happening to the middle class? When you look at these numbers, I mean, I've heard some people describe it as, as society is almost taking the shape of an hourglass. Mm. What's, what's happening is that the new poor are the former middle class. I get so, quite frankly, uh, sick and tired of politicians talking all the time about and to the middle class, as if somehow the middle class is the same now as it was 10 or 12 years ago. It's, let's be clear about this. The new poor, as I said a moment ago, are the former middle class. Those numbers you just laid out make the case very clearly. More and more Americans of every race and color and creed and ethnicity are falling into, into the ranks of the poor every single day. So at some point, politicians have got to stop being afraid to say the word poor to talk about poverty in, in this country. We can discuss everything else in Washington, but never get serious about a conversation about how we eradicate poverty in this country. Well, here's the bottom line. If the middle class, who politicians are, uh, think that their polls suggest are the folk they should be talking to, the folk they should be referencing, if the middle class continues to fall more and more into the ranks of the poor, at some point, we got to move beyond trying to placate or talk about the middle class and really talk about what's happening in America, and that is mm -hmm. poverty. Omaha, Nebraska, in the country's heartland. Home to billionaire Warren Buffett. And ranked by Forbes as the most affordable city in America. You've really got a lot of big time companies here, Fortune 500 companies. Ivan Gilreath knows Omaha well. He earned his MBA here and launched a successful corporate career. He drove us through a predominantly white neighborhood. Then he took us across town. This is where the uh, majority of your African-American population uh, resides. To the other Omaha that Gilreath knows just as well. This area here has been really the site of uh, a lot of violence over the years, gang violence. He says the disparity between whites and blacks is shocking and deeply rooted in Omaha's segregated past, when many black families were denied banking loans, higher paying jobs, and equal education. The percentage of black children who live in poverty here ranks number one in the nation. You can be shocked and say, oh my God, it's, it's an awful place. Or you can be shocked with feeling like we need to galvanize 
and everybody in this community needs to do whatever they can to reverse that cycle. What are you doing over here, young lady? For Gilry, that meant leaving a lucrative corporate job to return home to his community as CEO of the Boys and Girls Club. To make sure that kids like 14-year-old Markel Vaughn have a safe place to play and study. This is Markel's home away from home that his mother Karina calls a saving grace in her neighborhood. What are some of the challenges that you're up against being a single mom? I don't want to see anything happen to my son. He's a good kid, you know, and so I'm sorry. I'm thankful, you know, every day that I have him in my life. In the past seven years, five children from the Boys and Girls Club that Markel attends have been killed. There is still a need for as many of us African-American men who can come back and provide that same kind of influence to these young people that I received at the club. Like Markel, Gilreath also grew up in this neighborhood. His mother, Willa Lee, raised five children on her own, and she's convinced the only way to close the poverty gap is through higher education. And I sent all of my children to all of them graduated. I got three that went to college and finished college. What are your goals for yourself? What is it that you want for yourself? I want to be able to go to college and be able to make it to the pros, but if that don't work out, I want to be a veterinarian or a zookeeper or something. As an honor student and a star athlete, Markel is well on his way down the same road that Ivan Gilreath traveled.